Greetings, everyone. This is Terry Naturally with another edition of Terry Talks Nutrition. We're here always on this weekend. Every weekend we are here. And we hope you join us so we can share more information with you as to how you can have a better degree of health, vitality, and just a quality of lifestyle. It all comes down to making choices. And the supplements you take is a choice. The food you eat is a choice. The length of time you sleep is a choice. Whether you are overweight or at a good weight is a choice. Everything we do, every day, we choose good or bad. And I know I've talked, to the, talked about this many, many times, and I'm not going to belabor this, because we have a really good lineup of information for you, but I just want to call your attention to it again, that you don't forget. The food you eat, every bite, has a metabolic chemical change in your body. Now, good food... Healthy food, nutritious, with as many vitamins and minerals and other accessory food factors, can change your chemistry for the good. But if you eat junk, polyunsaturated fatty acids, vegetable oils, excessive carbohydrates, especially refined and processed, and sugar all have a detrimental effect on your health. You will suffer. And many of the conditions that are now treated by physicians with drugs are only due because we made back choices. Now once in a while, occasionally, Making a bad choice is okay. You'll get by with that. One day when you're celebrating with your your spouse and an anniversary and you're sharing a piece of cake, no big deal. But the American diet is sharing junk all the time. Our diet is high in carbohydrates and sugar vegetable oils, the three most inflammatory foods you can eat. Yes, that means they cause inflammation in your body. And then you're trying to find a way to stop the inflammation because we know that chronic inflammation is involved with every disease imaginable. Stop the inflammation and you will stop suffering, having pain, heart disease, arthritis, type 2 diabetes, obesity, on and on and on. We create those conditions by what we do. Not the fault of the doctor. It's not because, you know, God is mad at us or we're doing the wrong things. We are doing the wrong things. And that comes back to bite us. So we need to have the responsibility to make the changes to prevent unhealthy conditions. And today we're going to talk about prostate. So guys, don't go away. Lots of good information on your prostate. BPH, benign prosthetic hyperplasia. We'll talk about that. That's just a fancy word for saying your prostate's not working. And you're getting up several times a night to urinate to relieve yourself. Can you lower that from three, four, five down to one, zero? 
Can you have a healthier prostate? Absolutely. But it takes a little bit of time and choosing the right supplements. We'll also talk about what is nano. N-A-N-O. What is nano? And then how big of a factor are lawn chemicals that are sprayed on your lawn and how do they affect your dog? I spray nothing. I have 10 acres of land and I spray nothing. No chemicals on my 10 acres. And I, in the, sp- <laughs> in the springtime, I'm not probably the happiest. Well, I shouldn't say I'm not the happiest. People around me are not the happiest because I have 10 acres of dandelions. I love them. They are the bee's first flower. And we need them to feed the bees. I spray nothing. I don't care if I have a good looking yard. And yet I do. We don't need to have it so tidied up. It can look very nice being a little bit wild. And we'll talk about Lyme disease. We have been fighting Lyme disease for 25, 30 years or more. And how can we stop Lyme disease? And you know that good old happy food? French fries. We serve a lot of French fries. Why are they bad for us? Well, first of all, it may sound funny, but they can make you sad. If you eat french fries, it can make you sad. One of the easiest ways to get healthy, and we all want that. We all want the easy way. Well, overall, it takes a lot more work to be healthy than to be unhealthy. If you just follow the American crowd and eat in all the restaurants, or most of the restaurants, and again, it's your choice where you eat and the choice of what you select when you do order off the menu. So these are all choices. But the easiest way to get healthy is to get more sleep. Sleep is like plugging in your phone to the charger. Your iPad is charging. Why do you charge it? To get back the energy you need in order for you to use it. That's just like our bodies. We need to be recharged. We need to be plugged into something. And sleep is that charger. If you don't get enough sleep, it's going to create so much stress and nervous tension that you'll be unhealthy. And you know when it comes between men and women, actually women need to take their heart health more seriously than men. Women are more susceptible for serious heart disease. And then we're on the topic of heart. Let's talk about how we can help you eliminate those varicose veins. But we have so much to talk about today. So let's just get on with our subject today and and really do the job for making it work extremely well. So what is BPH? Benign 
prostatic, prostate, hyperplasia, enlargement, hyper, getting bigger. So we're talking about the enlarged prostate gland, not cancer. That's a different subject. When we're talking about PSA scores and the risk, not the risk of cancer, but the risk of a high PSA can tell us something about prostate cancer, but that's not the subject today. That will be a subject in the future. What about the PSA score? So would you be worried about it? Well, that's another topic. But right now, let's talk about what happens when your prostate enlarges, gets bigger, takes up more room where it is to squeeze off the bladder. So this is not a cancerous condition. It does not spread. The prostate will enlarge but nothing will spread to cause further damage. And is rarely, rarely ever life-threatening. And the symptoms, you probably have all experienced the symptoms if you're 60 or over. And the symptoms mostly affect urination. Urinating frequently. And the bladder does not feel full, fully emptied. You always feel you want to go, even though you went all you, all you can, but you still feel you haven't emptied the bladder. And you have a very strong or sudden urge to urinate. BPH is very common. By the age of 50 to 60, 50% 50 of all men will be experiencing symptoms and 80% of all men over the age of 70 will be affected. Medication is often used for BPH. But the side effects of these medications, the drugs that are used to treat BPH can be significant. And one area which includes adverse effects on sexual libido function. I would much rather get up three, four times a night than be treated with the drug. But I think by the time I get to the end of my conversation with you on BPH, I can offer you a natural alternative that is more effective, or at least as effective, as the medication. In a recent study, actually it was a survey. It wasn't a study, it was a recent survey of men diagnosed with BPH, 49% those taking the survey being treated with medication from the survey 48% of those that completed the survey wanted to get off the medication. Almost half of those being treated with a drug for BPH did not want to take the drug. Well, why are you? No one is forcing you to take the drug. Ask questions. Talk to your doctor. Why, why is your doctor prescribing the medication? What does the medication do to your health? Read the leaflet or go online 
and look up the medication and look for the side effects. You are taking your care of your health. You and I are the only ones responsible for our health. The doctor doesn't know one hill of beans about nutrition. The doctor cannot tell you how to get healthy. And if you were healthy, you wouldn't have some of these problems. But the doctor can't tell you how to be healthy. He can't give you any advice as to how to be healthy. I've heard doctors tell their patients, food has nothing to do with your health. What? They are so brainwashed on drugs that drugs are the answer to all unhealthy conditions when that is not true. We have unhealthy conditions because we have not chosen the right food to eat or the right lifestyle to follow. 98% of all diseases all diseases today being treated by drugs are caused by our lifestyle choices. We start the cascade of events that cause disease, cause our medical problems, cause our unhealthy conditions. Drug companies don't care if you're healthy or not. In fact, they love you being unhealthy. Because they need sick people who require drugs or they think they require drugs. And your doctor may agree because your doctor will prescribe drugs, not prescribe lifestyle choices, not prescribe a good diet, not prescribe health, but drugs. And doctors today have about six minutes with each patient. So, we have to be responsible for our health. We have to learn how to take care of ourselves. So, there is some natural relief. It isn't all drug therapy. There is natural relief for what we call BPH. And as you know from earlier in the program, that stands for benign Prostatic hyperplasia, enlargement of the prostate. So what is natural? What can be used? Well, if I were to create a formula that would include all the nutrients that research has shown that can relieve the symptoms of BPH. First, zinc. Because zinc is highly concentrated in the prostate gland. And it's required for normal prostate function. And then there is a plant, actually a berry, called saw, S-A-W, palmetto. P-A-L-M-E-T-T-O. Salt palmetto. This grows in Florida. But yet, 50 years ago or more, they were using this berry that grows in Florida for treating prostate disorders in Europe. 50 years ago. And this berry as shown in multiple clinical studies to improve prostate function, reduce the symptoms of enlargement of the prostate, and to prevent progression of the enlargement of the prostate. Now, from these studies, You have to use a very specific concentration and ratio of the essential fatty acids in the berry. The berry contains a very, very high level of oil. 
and the best result with salt palmetto berry, the extracts are standardized to at least 80% of the fatty acids. Another ingredient I would certainly include in a formulation to improve your prostate health, guys, is beta testosterone. Treatment with this compound, beta testosterone, has shown in clinical trials to increase urine flow and the urine flow rate and reduce symptoms in men with BPH. And then the last one I would include is boron. So we have four very, very important nutrients that can support the health of the prostate and slow down the enlargement and reduce the symptoms of urinating. So it would be zinc, salt and metaberry oil, beta testosterone, and boron. And boron regulates testosterone, the sex hormones. And it raises free testosterone levels. So if I were to put together a formulation like this, I would take 320 milligrams of standardized salt from Meadowberry. Standardized at 80%. 80%. I've seen some companies try to use 30%. It's expensive. So the less you use, the cheaper the product is. And many consumers don't realize what they're buying but they just heard about salt and meadowberry, but they don't know that it has to be specifically standardized at a specific ratio. But now this low quality product that doesn't match the clinical studies, well, what do you know? Doesn't work. Or maybe works in a very weak manner. So, uh, 320 milligrams of standardized salt and butterberry extract. Standardized 80% for the free fatty acids. And 30 milligrams of zinc. 60 milligrams of beta testosterone. And 3 milligrams of boron daily. One time a day. Now, here's an extra tip. It has nothing to do with this formulation. But you might add 100 milligrams of a plant that grows in Iceland called Angelica, Archangelica. That's the name of the species of the plant. Angelica. Archangelica. So take 100 milligrams, maybe 200 milligrams before bedtime for additionally aiding in reducing nighttime urination so you don't have to get up as often. It has a huge benefit. So if you're getting up three, four times a night. And you feel like you still would want to urinate, but you can't. Or you have a very small caliber of stream. Or you stand over the urinal forever. And it seems like it just doesn't come. And you wait, then you wait, and you wait. And then it starts dribbling. And many times men think they're finished urinating. 
and they put themselves all back together again, and they continue to dribble. It's a very annoying condition. Not life-threatening at all. But certainly darn well annoying. But you can really make a difference by including the formulation of 320 milligrams of standardized sulfamotoberry, 30 milligrams of zinc, 60 milligrams of beta testosterone, 3 milligrams of boron. Just, you just have to take that once a day. It has been shown clinically, clinically effective at a one time daily. And then the bonus I gave you is to add 100 milligrams or 200 milligrams, not to the formulation, separately, of the Angelica, Arc Angelica. That'll help dramatically improve the quality of your prostate, the health of your prostate. So you can reduce the annoying symptoms. Now you may not be 100%. You may be getting up three, four, five times. Now maybe you're up once. And they've done some really good research that shows that also that it helps improve your sleep cycle. You're not getting up and disturbing your sleep. You wake up more refreshed in the morning, more ready to start the day. It all is beneficial. It makes a big difference. So my friends, I'm down at the bottom of the hour. I'm ready to take a break. I'm not going anywhere. I want you back here. I'm going to be here, so I hope you are here too. We'll come back right here on Terry Talks Nutrition. I'm Terry Naturally. Welcome back, my friends. This is Terry Naturally. This is another portion of our Terry Talks Nutrition. And by the way, we're here for an hour. But there's a lot more you can learn about being healthy. I encourage you to read books And if you go to my website, Terry Talks, that's T-A-L-K-S, Terry Talks Nutrition, dot com. There you can read my newsletters, or you actually can subscribe to my newsletter. But I have most of my newsletters in an archive section or stored on the website that you can read those newsletters anytime you want. You probably are listening to the radio show via the radio. But you know, you can also listen via the computer. So no matter where you are in the world, if you have a computer, you can listen to my radio show, even live. I know it takes a lot more, it's tougher to listen live anywhere around the world because you have to change your times wherever you are. Like in India, I have some friends there that do listen live. They're 11 and a half hours ahead of us in the Central Standard Time in the U.S., So they have to adjust their times to be on the same time as we are. But you can also go into the radio show section and bring up any radio show that you would like to listen to and listen anytime you want. There's a lot of information. I have my diet, how I eat and how I think Everyone should try to eat in order to lower the carbohydrates, lower the junk, lower the sugar, and eat more protein, more fats, 
and a better quality of health based on a higher level of healthy foods. Anybody can do it if you want. You have to want. You have to be sick and tired of being sick and tired. You have to be tired of taking medications. You may not need to. You follow my diet, get seven, eight, nine hours of sleep, get 20, 30 minutes of exercise daily. And of course, if you find that you don't need a medication, before you go off, talk to your doctor. I don't know your needs. I don't know why the doctor prescribed the medication. It's not up to me to tell you to go off your medication. But after you've changed your life, I have talked to people all over the country that once they've changed their life, they went off almost all the medication. Some taking six or seven medications, now they're taking only one. And some only and some only none. That means you're getting healthier. And it doesn't make a difference how old you are. It might take more time. It might take more effort. You know, we have people that have lost their strength over a, every decade. We lose a lot of our muscular strength, a lot of our muscle mass. And then it's almost difficult to get out of a chair without help or to step up a curb or to go up a step. We should be getting stronger, although we will get weaker in time. <coughs> Excuse me. But we can get stronger and healthier. And all this way of doing so makes it possible. No matter how old you are. So follow my diet. Look at all the books that I have available. I have written 10 or 12 books that are... <coughs> excuse me, I've got a frog. Wow. Get that frog out of there, Terry. So you can read all those books, gain knowledge, gain information. And then I also gave you a reading list that I recommend of the books that I appreciate and the books that I think would help you get a better quality of life. So let's go on and talk about nano. What is nano? N-A-N-O. Have any idea what nano is? Well, now the use of nanoparticles. N-A-N-O. Particles. Nanoparticles. Is now being used in food, drugs, and even dietary supplements, vitamins and minerals. So nanoparticles are created when larger particles are reduced in size. They're reduced down in size and made so small they can't be seen by the human eye. So silica, titanium dioxide, and silver are examples of manufactured nanoparticles. Nanoparticles are used in hundreds of food, drugs, cosmetics, dietary supplements, as processing aids, or to improve the color, texture, and flavor of processed foods. 
and among other chemical uses. These nanoparticles are commonly found in sunscreen, shampoo, toothpaste, soap, moisturizers, nail polish, eyeshadow, wool, also in crackers, powdered mixes, dairy products, and even in dietary supplements. For example, I would never ever want to take a nano product. And now they have nano curcumin. And they're adding nano to a lot of other natural herbal products. And more. In Europe, they have a tighter restriction on what can be added to products. If a product contains nanoparticles in Europe, it must be disclosed on the label. There are no such requirements in the U.S. So why do we care? Should we be concerned about nanoparticles? And what are the concerns? Nanoparticles are so incredibly small they can travel inside your cell. Yes. They can travel inside your cell and damage the cell's DNA or trigger genetic mutations which is the first step in creating a cancer cell. And nanoparticles have also been shown to reduce beneficial gut bacteria and promote the growth of inflammation causing microorganisms in the intestines. Here are what some of the experts are saying. There are experts out there that are very concerned. And some of those concerns is that the use of nanoparticles is going faster than the research to determine their safety and effects on our health. There's no restrictions on lowering the size of particles. And yet, the smaller they get, they can go directly into your cell. Liver cells. Brain cells. Where are we going with this wanting to be better? When we don't know the safety of nanoparticles. And it might be impossible to avoid nanoparticles entirely because we don't know where they are. We don't know who's using them. So beware. Be aware. Ask questions. Minimize the intake of processed foods, which is the most common way most people are exposed to nanoparticles. But I see it being used more and more in the health food industry. Because we all want to improve the absorption of nutrients. But there are safer ways that have been proven safe. Like gamma cyclodextrin has been on the market 125 years. It's a very safe way to increase the absorption 
of compound, using essential oils, like binding to turmeric essential oil to curcumin increases absorption 700%, seven times. And having over 80 studies, 30, 40, 30, or 30 to 40 of those are actually clinical human studies. You don't have to subject yourself to the unknown, unproven safety issues. Nanoparticles are not safe. So when you can avoid them, please, the best thing to do is try to avoid them to, until we know that they're safe or could be safe. Now I mentioned before, in the springtime I have fields of dandelions, 10 acres of dandelions. But I also have a dog. And I don't want my dog walking in the lawn filled with Roundup or some chemicals. She's 14 years old and I want her to be around for another 5 to 10 years. She's my little girl. So, lawn chemicals possibly could be killing your dog. Now here's a study you may not have known about. You know, when you find these things out, then it's your choice. But if you don't know these things, then you don't have a choice. What you don't know, how can you choose? But when you know some of these things, you may think twice about whether or not you want to do this. Now, here is a study. It blew my mind away. A study found that dogs, your dog, your pet, your family member, whose owners, you, or possibly you, or me, I don't, use the herbicide 2,4-D just four times a year we're up to 200% more likely to develop lymphoma cancer of the lymphatic system. This is your dog. Just by walking in the grass that was treated four times a year with the herbicide. 2,4-D. Even if this chemical was used only once a year, cancer risk for the dogs were one-third higher. Exposure to lawn chemicals also increases the risk of bladder cancer, especially in certain dog breeds including beagles and Scottish terriers. 76% of dogs, all breeds, tested have long, excuse me, lawn chemicals in their urine after the home lawn care was applied. 76% of all dogs, all breeds, tested, have these chemicals in their urine. And dogs can ingest these chemicals by directly licking their feet or fur or by eating the plants that have been chemically treated. Sometimes you may see your dog eat grass. That's another subject. But if it's treated 
not only are eating the grass, they're eating all the chemicals. You know, if you want to fertilize your yard, you can look for pet-safe products with natural ingredients, organic sprays. They're available. They're a little bit more pricey. But if you've got a loved one and don't want to lose that pet, and you want to safeguard it against cancer, the best thing to do is try to avoid <clears throat> using these herbicides on your grass. Now Lyme disease. Lyme disease has been around for many, many years. And now the ticks are active again. So warmer weather in the northern states means ticks are active again. The local residents here in Wisconsin, where I am, I'm in Green Bay, Wisconsin, in the Midwest of the United States, have been finding ticks on themselves and their pets since mid-April. Warmer weather brings out the ticks. It makes them active. When it's cold, they become dormant. And ticks, I see people posting ticks on Facebook. And you have to be careful where they are. They can be in their mouth. They can be in their pad of their paws. You have to look carefully. And ticks can carry as many as nine different pathogens. Meaning like bacteria or viruses. And they can pass these viruses and bacteria to humans and other animals, including Lyme disease. And Lyme disease is becoming much, much more common in Wisconsin. In fact, the average number of cases has more than doubled over the last 15 years. So how would you know if you have Lyme disease? Well, here are some of the symptoms you might want to look for. Constant fatigue. Muscle pain. Joint pain. Headaches. Fever. Chills. And neck stiffness. So how do you protect yourself against Lyme disease? Well, if you find a tick, get it off as soon as possible. A tick needs to be attached for about 24 hours before it can infect a person with Lyme disease. So the quicker you remove ticks, the better. If you've been out in the woods, wooded area, You've been walking around some trails. As soon as you get home, look yourself over. Some people just attract ticks. And immediate care with antibiotics is helpful for most people. You might want to talk to your doctor. There are other things that can be used other than antibiotics. like propolis, elderberry extract, andographis. These are all antiviral, antibacterial. But up to 36% of people who are treated for Lyme disease will still have at least one symptom out of the series of symptoms that I shared with you already, like chronic fatigue, muscle and joint pain, neurological problems, 
months or years later, later, referred to as chronic Lyme disease. And for those who are dealing with chronic Lyme disease, I would suggest go on my website or go to our YouTube channel, which is called Terry Talks Nutrition YouTube channel. And you can listen to a webinar. It's called the Diagnosis and Treatment of Lyme's, Lyme's Disease by Dr. Jacob Teitelbaum and Dr. Nathan. They are experts in treating fibromyalgia and chronic Lyme disease. Now, there have not been enough studies, but some people have observed an improvement, a great improvement, when they have taken the following supplements. Glutathione, spelled G-L-U-T-A-T-H-I-O-N-E, glutathione. Chronic infection depletes glutathione. It's a naturally made compound in the body. But it can be depleted. And it's very critical for the immune system. It improves the function and alterations in cellular glutathione levels have been found even years after the initial infection. And agraphis. Very common recommendations for treating Lyme disease because of its known antibacterial, antiviral, and anti-inflammatory effects. And propolis. Propolis is a multi-antimicrobial. That means it kills all known pathogens. Very powerful natural antibiotic. And no, no side effects. Not even in children. Very safe for all ages. And because it's so purified, there's no allergy reaction to pollen. Propolis is a different substance that's gathered by the bees, but purified. So it's very, very effective for killing off all forms of pathogens like bacterial infection, viral infection, and fungal infection. Very, very powerful. And absolutely no side effects, not even a hint of a side effect. Propolis is a very powerful compound. Spelled P like in Peter. R-O. P like Peter. P-R-O-P-O-L-I-S. Propolis. The bees do not make it. It's gathered by the bees from shrubs and vegetation to use it as their own natural antibiotic and to protect their hive from contamination of viral infection or fungal. So with that, my friends, I'm wrapping up today's program. It's time for me to sign off. But you know you can find me here every week. Same time, same station. So join me at Terry Talks Nutrition. And in the meantime, go to my website, terrytalksnutrition.com. And with that, my friends, have a fantastic weekend. Say a prayer for this crazy, crazy world. And God bless you, my friends, and God bless this great country.
Thank you for listening to Terry Talks Nutrition Weekly Show. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a review on your favorite podcast platform, including Apple, Google, and iHeartRadio.